There are so many reasons for a talk being rejected at a conference, but it's easy to increase the odds of being selected. It all starts in the way that you reply to the call for papers. Your talk is basically one in the middle of a thousand. The program committee will receive thousands of submissions, so the experience for them is something like this. Each talk that they receive, each submission, is kind of like a coin. And now they need to find the ones that have most value inside of those, okay? So, and as you can see, in the middle of so many coins, you have many that don't value a lot. And since they need to review every single one of these submissions, they will need to be quite fast. So, the best way to distinct those is by general convention. Small things that look like a pattern to say if it is is a good talk or if it's not. So if your talk looks like every other single talk that has no value, they eventually will drop it because you are fighting with many other ones that have a lot of value. So if you want to be accepted, the first step depends on you. You need to reply to the call for papers without shooting yourself in the foot. I had the pleasure of sitting at some program committees in my career and I reviewed thousands of submissions. So in this video, I will share with you eight reasons why your talk submission might be rejected, but also how to improve your abstracts in order to be accepted at your next conference. And if you stay till the end, I will share with you a three-part formula that you can easily follow to improve your abstracts. Problem number one, boring titles. The title of your session is I Value Real Estate. It needs to be attention grabbing. Imagine that you are at a conference, you have multiple sessions going on at the same time, you will glance through them. So if the title doesn't grab your attention, you will not even try to look into the abstract. So you need to understand that you are competing for attention. Not only attention at the time of the conference, but also attention at the time of the review. You are one in a thousand, so you need to write a title that will catch the attention of the committee. So what can you do? You can try to be funny, but don't take that too far. And you can try to trigger curiosity. You can play with words. And if you need inspiration, try to find previous editions of that conference, of those conferences that you like, and try to see what the best speakers usually use as a title and use that to inspire your creativity. Problem number two, tiny abstracts. I can assure you that if you submit a two-line abstract, you will fail. The abstract is the drill down of your title. First, you had one job. You wrote an excellent title. That title gets my attention. But I'm in doubt between your talk and another one. So now, how can I decide between those two? That's the role of your abstract. That is what will happen either at a conference, but also during the agenda committee. So I need to write an abstract that will grab the attention of those that are looking into it. I need to write an abstract that by the end, I have a clear idea of what will happen during that talk. I have to have an abstract that when someone is reading, they have the feeling that that is a great session. That's why an abstract can't be too small. But also it can't be too long, because let's face it, an agenda committee is reviewing thousands of submissions. They are doing that at night. It's unpaid work. They are tired. They have been reviewing thousands of things. If you come with a 1000 word abstract, they will not read it whole. They will glance through it. Problem number three, unclear abstracts. And here you'll find many things. It's common to see titles that are completely disconnected from the abstract. So they might have an excellent title that grabs the attention, but now you read the description and it doesn't even make sense. Looks like it's from another talk. Looks like it's a wrong copy paste. So make sure that when you read the title, the abstract is kind of like a drill down and write it with something in mind. That abstract will work to two different audiences. The first one is the committee. And second one is the audience of the conference, the ones that are attending the conference. But first you need to go through the first step, that is, those will pick the program. And keep in mind that that team is composed by people with a lot of experience. 
with people that have reviewed thousands of talks, with people that have attended to thousands of conferences. So they need to read your abstract and have a clear idea of what's your goal with that talk. That's why it's extremely important to include in your abstract the main takeaways, the main mission of that talk, the why that talk exists. And the final tip regarding unclear abstracts is that you take care of the way that you write, either through spelling, but also by formatting. Having a wall of text without paragraphs is extremely hard to read. The simple fact that sometimes you break down into different sections, your abstract will improve the readability. And then it might look like something that is a detail, but is extremely important for those consuming that information. Problem number four, putting yourself first. You need to understand that your talk is not about you. You are not the star of that session. You are there to serve the audience. So if your abstract starts by telling how amazing you are, by telling the incredible achievements of your career, or now your company has done something incredible, all of that doesn't matter to the audience. You are there to serve the audience. So you need to tell them what they are getting from your talk. So what you need to do is to first understand who's the audience of that conference, understand what they look for, and then create an abstract a talk based on that. Explain what that type of people are getting from going to 30 minutes or one hour of your session. The fifth problem is sales pitch. No one wants a sales pitch. Everyone that works in tech is extremely sensible to a sales pitch. But also, we work in an industry where we have many developer advocates talking at conferences. And oddly enough, many of the best speakers at those conferences are in fact developer advocates. And how can they do that without doing sales pitch? Because they create talks that have the audience in mind, that put the audience first. As I told you before, it doesn't matter how amazing they are, how amazing their company is, how amazing their product is. They need to show up with the intention of providing something valuable to the audience. During the process, they might mention their company, they might mention their product, they might even use their product to achieve that result. But the audience needs to take something home. So if the committee suspects that your talk might be a sales pitch, I can assure you that they will discard it. Problem number six, unrealistic talks. If you write an abstract where we'll say that you will cover so many things about 3D modeling and you are covering from start to finish and it's a talk for 30 minutes, it will look like an unrealistic thing. So in your abstract, make sure that it is clear how you are running your talk. And that might mean that you are just doing a small introduction or you are taking a different approach. And in that case, make sure that you use any type of additional description or additional notes to the committee to explain them your goal with that session. Because if you are proposing a talk that looks like will take more time than the one that will be assigned to you, or you are proposing a talk that is for an hour, but by reading the title and description, I have the feeling that it is just a lightning talk. I can assure you that the committee will reject it. Because keep in mind that they are extremely experienced. Once they read your title, they have a clue of what you'll be doing on that stage. So provide them as much information as possible in order to explain how are you running that talk. Problem number seven, artificial. This is a problem that nowadays is growing at a fast pace. Why? With the use of AI, we are using AI to help us to write titles and descriptions for talks. And there's nothing wrong with that if you heavily edit it. If you pick the thing that comes out of ChatGPT and you submit it, it will be quite clear for the committee that you are not the one writing that thing. Because if you don't change that text, it will not sound like a human. It will have complex words that we normally don't use, like we will delve into something or in an ever-evolving landscape, things like that. And no one can relate to that. If the reader is a native English speaker, it will quickly notice that that doesn't sound like natural English. 
that doesn't sound like the way that the speaker talks. But also, if the reader is a non-native English speaker, you might not even recognize some of the expressions that you have there. So my suggestion to you is that you write like a human. If you use AI to create the first draft of your session, that's okay, but then go through it and edit it until the point that you can read it in a way that looks like you. And the problem number eight is no effort submissions. If you go to the call for papers page and you try to fill in the form in the way that is most simple to you, that doesn't require a lot of effort. You go to your website, to a markdown file, you grab every single thing that you have there, you copy it, you go to the form, you find the first multi-line text field, you paste it there, and you submit it. You are basically showing a lack of respect for the work of the committee, because after they will need to process that thing. So if the committee is asking you to provide an abstract, put there only the abstract. If they are asking you for tags or for tracks, make sure that you have some thought about which one it fits better. Otherwise, remember that you are competing with thousands of other submissions. And those small details might mean that in the final selection, you might have a great talk, but when they need to decide between two talks to close the program, they might discard your talk. So in your CFP form, make sure you fill the form correctly. Give as much detail as you can. But also on that form, you might find the field to provide extra information to the committee, to the organizers. Use that field to provide as many proofs as you can that you are the right person to give that talk. And often one of the first things that the committee will look for is for a video that shows you on a stage giving a talk because they want to understand if you are capable of doing it. So make sure that you provide links to previous talks. If you have that exact session already recorded somewhere, link it there. So provide as much information as you can to prove that you are the right person for that session and also to that conference. Now, as I promised, let's talk about the bonus tip. One interesting thing about copywriting is that often we can use kind of like formulas and systems to help us achieve our goals. And even in an abstract, you can find those. And one of those formulas is a three-part system. So your abstract should have three parts. Problem, promise, result. What are they? So in the problem, you will write something that will grab the attention of our reader by showing them a problem that they can relate to. Something that when they read, they can relate to it, that they think, oh, this might be interesting for me. So you are grabbing the attention right there. Then you will make a promise, a promise of how you will address exactly those problems during that session, but also a promise to show why you are the best person and why the thing that you are doing on that session is different and will help them to solve that problem that they have to address that problem. Why you have something unique to say about this thing that you are discussing in this session. And finally, in the third part, you will talk about the result. And the result is where you say who should come to this session. As an example, they can relate to the problem, they understand how you are going to do this thing, but then you can say in the result that if you are a junior developer, this session is for you. Now, if I have a lot of experience, I will understand that you might be talking about the introduction to that topic, so it might not be to me. So you are saying this result is for this type of people. But also, more important than that, is that you say the takeaways that they will have. You want to tell them what they are taking home, what will change, what's the main thing that they will learn on that session. So if you write your abstract in this way, with three different paragraphs at least, you can have a solid submission. But even if you follow everything that I mentioned on this video, you avoid those eight problems, you apply this formula, even then your session might be rejected. But don't get discouraged by that. You need to understand that the acceptance rate on most conferences is quite small. Only maybe five to 8% of the submissions are usually accepted. And you are competing with renowned speakers, with people that do this for a long time, that they have a reputation. So if it didn't work this time, you can always ask for feedback 
improve it, and try again. And if you need feedback on any of those, make sure you leave a comment below. And in the meanwhile, our friends from YouTube think you should watch this video right here.